is what the Lord is good. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. We magnify you today, Lord God. Sibaru de Moshita, Moshikanda, Rabutere, Sitara Rabutika. Now we were talking about how tongues ought to be our. Get that echo out, Bill. Can you do that? Please, thank you. How tongues ought to be like our mother tongue. You should be more familiar with that. But it's also, when you, when you honestly think about it, it's also called our, our love language. It's our love language. You can, you can, you know, uh, you know, when you have somebody special in your life and you, you uh, say s sweet words, loving words, okay? Well, it is, it's, it's a language of love. God is love and it came from Him. So when we're praying in the Holy Ghost, it's, uh, we're talking that love language. You know? Amen. Let's, 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 let's do that. Let's, let's, let's talk to Him in that love language. Because you can tell Him how much you love Him in tongues more than you could ever tell Him with English or French or whatever you speak. She barra butida, she tarra butida, pita 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 Zibaru baru 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 Oh, we magnify you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. Oh, we give you praise. We give you thanks, Lord God. Hallelujah. You know, tongues is a, a perfect language. It's perfect. You can praise him with your understanding, and and uh, uh, but you could be uh, trying to manipulate God to get God to do something, okay? But when you're in the spirit, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, the Lord is good, amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We're, we're in the, do you remember a, a number of years ago, we were working in the nursery on a Sunday morning, and I sent somebody back to come and get you, and I, and I, I laid hands on you, and later on you told me that you hadn't been feeling well and that there was a lot of things going on in your body. And you got healed that day. Do you remember that? Come up here. Hallelujah. Seems like I'm supposed to lay hands on you again today. If that's all right. I don't know. I just try to obey the Holy Spirit. Is that all right with you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
We don't have to understand everything, but we do have to be obedient. Lots of things I don't understand, but I endeavor to be obedient to. What was that all about? I don't know. Just thought. Thought. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, why don't we say this? I love. After by me. And say it again like you mean it. I love Pastor Bison. Well, what does that mean? That means Wednesday, the Lord told me what to speak on today. That which is a rarity, very rare, that he will tell me on Wednesday what he wants me to do on Sunday. Sometimes he waits till Sunday morning, a lot of the times. But he told me what he wanted me to minister on, so... Uh, if you think that I'm, I'm picking on you, I'm not, but the Holy Ghost is. Okay? So we're going to teach on walking in love. Just like Maria let the cat out of the bag, I guess, so to speak. And because the, the Lord, he, he indicated to me, uh, uh, communicated, let's say it that way, he communicated to me on Wednesday that that's what he wanted me to do. And so I, Thursday I was asking him if he wanted to change his mind, and he didn't. I asked him Friday if he wanted to change his mind, and he didn't. I asked him Saturday if he wanted to change his mind. I even changed, asked him last night, do you want to change your mind about this, Lord? We can go another direction. And he did not change his mind. And so we're going to uh, go to Ephesians chapter 5. We're going to start there in verse 1. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Now you did all say, you all did confess that you loved me, right? Amen. Right. Well, why don't we put it to the test? Okay. I just want to put some things to the test. Ephesians 5, 1. Be therefore followers of God as dear children. So he's writing to the church at Ephesus. And so this was the will of God for the church at Ephesus. If it's the will of God for the church in Ephesus, it's the will of God for the church in Fredericton. All right? Amen. And so he said that... Uh, be therefore followers uh, of God. Now, the word followers in the Greek is imitators. So we are told to be imitators of God. Now that most leaves most people in the dust right there. Say, so, well, that, that's God, that's not possible. Well, uh, it is possible because he tells us how he wants us to be followers of God. Verse 2, please. And walk in love. Well, God is love, it tells us in 1 John, I think, chapter 4. Tells us that God is love. God is the Spirit and God is love. And so basically when we're walking in the Spirit, we have to be walking in love. Amen? Okay. The love walk is poss possibly and more than likely the most difficult walk you will ever, ever encounter. You might, you know, some people stumble a little bit with faith, but we're told to walk in faith. We're told to walk in the Spirit. And we're told to walk in love. And even though the, the love walk sounds so so simple and so easy, it's perhaps the most difficult one to master. Okay? But it can be done. It can be done. The reason it can be done is that found over it. Well, let's finish reading this, then we'll go to Romans 5. 5, and walk in love as Christ has also loved us. How did, how did Jesus love us? He gave everything for you. Even when we didn't want him to, even when we were just ranked sinners, he gave everything just, just for us, because he loved us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have life everlasting. And he gave himself for us, offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You know, you smell good to God. Yeah. I remember Bill's pickup line. He said, man, you speak to the ladies. He said, you smell good. You want to smell me? It didn't work very good. Go home. But we're a sweet-smelling savor to God. God, because of the price that, that Jesus paid. Okay, we're 
washed in his blood. They're covered in his blood. Amen. Now we can go to Romans 5.5. 5. So again, when, when we understand these things, uh, turn to your neighbor and tell him, you have no excuse for not walking in love after this morning. And turn to him and tell him, good love. <laughs> and hope maketh not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us and so when he saved you he gave us it tells us in, in 1 Corinthians uh, uh, I'm sorry Romans uh, uh, what's that Romans uh, 12 3 we've been given the measure of faith but here he talks about that the, the love of God was was shed abroad. In other words, he didn't. It wasn't a little a little dabble, do you? He 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 saturated our hearts with the love of God, and so the love of God is within me. Okay. Now it's my choice whether I walk in it or don't walk in it. But if I can't walk in it if I don't understand it. Is that true? You can't walk in something if, if you don't understand how it, how it is supposed to work. And so I remember uh, that time for short story, I think. I was uh, rented a car uh, down in uh, 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 North Hope, Virginia, and it was a new model car. And so you had to go to this parking lot where it was at way back at the very end, and they, they gave me some kind of a fob. I'm looking for a key. They give you a fob. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, dear Lord, we're going to do that. So I get there, and I'm trying to fob the car. I can't fob the car. I can't, I can't figure out how do you start this stupid thing. You know, this is this is top of the line car. I think they I, they upgraded me to a Cadillac or something. And I so I could not get the thing started. And so finally I, I had to walk all the way back. I had to tell the lady, I said, I'm sorry. I have no idea how to start the car. She says, put your foot on the brake and push the button. The car will start. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But see, I didn't know. Nobody ever told me. I didn't know how. But once I knew how, I started that car every single time. Amen? Hallelujah. And so the love of God is in your heart. Say, it wouldn't hurt you to confess that either. So say, the love of God, the love of God. Is, shed is shed abroad in my heart. In my and after this morning, I have no excuse for not walking in love. Amen. All right, you're all doing good. I think you're smiling. Hallelujah. Now turn with me to, to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Now we'll begin to see if you still love me. The last half of chapter 11 of 1 Corinthians is about communion. And we always, almost always pick it up around verse 23. But I just forgot the reading here the other day, and, and I, I started reading some of the verses earlier. It's like the Holy Spirit did prompt me, but we the verses before. You know, sometimes it, it's, so it's good to, to just see the context of what verse 23 and some of the other verses are talking about. So let's go to verse 17. Verse 17. So we're at 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 17. Now this, now in this, I was getting ready to talk about communion. Uh, I declare unto you, I praise you not that you come together, not for the better, but for the worse. Isn't it interesting that he says when you come together, when you come when you come to church, it's not for not for anything better. It's you know things are going to get worse. You know things can get worse when you go to church. I never saw that before. In fact, I called Rick. I said, "Listen to this verse," and he said, "Wow, I've never seen that." Even though we, but but he's trying to tell them something. There's see if if we're going to master this love walk, we we've, we've got to. Master, we've got to understand it. If we're going to go there, we've got to get it together here. Yeah. Thank you for that one. Uh huh. Yeah. No, that's not the truth. We do. Oh, yeah. We just have to. 
Well, how do we do that? Well, we, we, we master the love for it. And so he's simply telling this group of people, this church, uh, uh, 2,000 years ago, he said, now, now in this I declare unto you, I praise you not. He said that he, he, even though this church was full of the gifts of the Spirit, gifts flowing, you know, just moving wonderfully, gloriously, there's issues arose with people. I've often said the ministry would be awesome if we didn't have any people involved. But because there's people, you know, it, you know, everybody has problems and things that happen in life. And, and so we have, to, we have to learn how to, to help people. My job here is to help people. Do you understand that? I'm here to help. I'm not here to tear people down. I'm not here to chew people up. I'm here to be a blessing. Okay, that, that's what I'm here for. I try to be a blessing for people. I try to bring some life and to help people out, you know, get on the right path when necessary. <clears throat> that you come together not for the better, but for the worse. So when they started going to church, things got worse, not better. And then it goes on to talk about the, about the body of Christ, talk about communion. And you get down to, uh, uh, let's take a quick look. At, uh, uh, verse 27. Wherefore, whosoever eat shall eat this bread, drink the cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Now, the Lord's body is, is twofold. One is talking about his physical body that was broken. You understand that was his physical body. His body was broken for our healing. Stripes on his back for our healing. His blood was spilled out for, for the remission of our sins to be washed away. But the, the, the other side of the coin is you're the body of Christ. And so when we, when we uh, uh, look at each other, we have to see we're part of the body of Christ. Okay? And, uh, I, and when I was going to, to Bible school, they were trying to explain to us, you know, it's difficult to, to put faith in one word, to, to explain what faith is. You know, it's, it's more than just an adjective. Well, it's kind of hard to explain what love is. But the, the best, the, 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 the best what I ever heard what, about what God's love is, the agape love, is God sees people as valuable and precious. Valuable and precious. God sees you as valuable and precious. Why does he see you as valuable and precious? Because you are valuable and precious. But we have to be able to see each other as valuable and precious. Because when we don't see each other as valuable and precious, uh, we've opened up a door that is, is, can be some problems for us. And let's go down to the next verse. Okay. For this cause. For this cause. For this cause. Many. This is a church that has some problems. Actually, you know, we were, uh, Krista, can you go back to, we were inside in verse 17. Go to, go to verse 17 one more time, then, then we'll eventually we'll get back to this one. So we, we left something out, I think it's important. Uh, now in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not that you come together, not for the better, but for the worse. Verse 18, this it gives us more insight, and this is where he starts. First of all, that when you come together in the church, or he's in church, I hear there's divisions among you. Oh, he says, I hear there's divisions. It's a, division is a problem. Division is separation. Okay? It says in, in Acts chapter 2, uh, verse 1, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all gathered together in one accord and in one place. And then it says there came a sound from heaven that, that uh, filled the house. So when, when we get to a place that there's division among us, then, then it opens the door for uh, not good things to happen to us. Remember Paul said, he said that, that it's not for the better. Okay? We, we have to be united. We have to be united. Okay? And you, can, you can have different opinions about different things. It's okay. okay. Everybody can have a different opinion. But we walk together in the spirit. 
We say the same thing, we believe the same thing. Thank you for that one. Okay. We removed all the stones, so there's no stoning of people today, so. I hear that there be divisions. That, that word, I, I wrote it down in the Greek. In my Bible, if I wouldn't forget. It means a split, a gap, to rent for a schism. So that, that got into this church, this, this Holy Ghost church. And now let's go to uh, uh, verse 30. With this in mind, we're, what we're going to find out today, how important it is to walk in love. This is, this, this is paramount for all of us to learn how to walk in love with each other. Okay? Hallelujah. For this cause, many are weak and sickly, and some have, some have died prematurely. Fine, because you have to go back and you have to study it, and you need this and a few other things. But he said that, that because they, 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 they didn't want to get their act together. This Holy Ghost Church, this Holy Ghost Church, they just, they just couldn't get it together. And so it opened up a door for the devil to get in and and uh, I don't know about you, but I don't want the devil in anything, do you? No, 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 no. So we, we come to the place. Now let's, we're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We're going to start we're going to do the Amplified Bible this morning. Hallelujah. You know how, you know how I learned to walk in love? The Lord told me why all I had all my problems, why everything was going wrong in my life really going wrong at four in the morning. I'm up complaining about life. I'm, I'm pastoring here. I'm complaining to God. And he said to me, wasn't an audible boy, but he was plain and clear. He quoted a scripture to me. He said, make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned away. I said, Lord, I know where that is over in Hebrews, Hebrews 12. I said, but what does it mean? He said, Gary, you got out of your love walk. Mm -hmm. Oh, that came like a revelation to me. I mean, it was revelation. Oh, my God. It don't take long. It took me 10 seconds to get in my love walk. Did that smooth everything out? No. But it kept me safe. And then it turned out for my good. Still is good work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and so this is the, the, the classic version. Is that right, Krista? <clears throat> Verse 1 says, uh, If I can speak in tongues of men and even of angels, but do not have love, that reasoning, intentional, spiritual devotion, such as is inspired by God's love for and in us, in other words, that seeing other people is valuable and precious, God sees you as valuable and precious. You know, you don't have any trouble usually seeing your children as valuable and precious, or your pets as valuable and precious. But see, we have to be able to see each other. He says, I am only a, a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. I was going to bring some, some, some of my pot lids this morning, but I forgot some <laughs> as a demonstration uh, of clanging. You know, you can, you can be speaking very eloquently, and you can do be ministry very eloquently and and all oh God hears a clean, clang, clung, clung. Yeah, it, it might sound good to everybody else, but, but in God's ears. See, we were worshiping the Lord today. I believe he receives that, he hears that, and, and he loves us when we love him like that. But if I'm here telling you all these things and I'm not walking in love, God's saying, yeah, he did. God don't, you know, it's just not, it's, it's not doing any good. It doesn't do me any good. Because I love you. There's not a person here that, that comes through the doors that I don't love. I don't care about. Okay? I mean, I've poured my life out here. I've been here 22 years. You just pour, you pour yourself into it. You know, not everybody appreciates it over the years. You know, people get upset with you and go. But I, I, I've learned how to walk in love. You know, kind of short. Yeah. Are you sure? I haven't told this one. So, Kathy, you can tell Rob I told the new one, please. 
year, many years ago, many, many years ago, it was a little after uh, uh, we, we built a new sanctuary here. And uh, I, I, we went away on vacation, I don't know, maybe to Khan or something like that. And uh, when I came, came home and I came into the church, uh, I opened up my office door and they had repainted my office burnt orange. And I go, he said, Pastor, how do you like it? I said, wow. He said, wow, do you really like it? He said, wow. Really burnt orange. It just, <laughs> and I know that was the, the trend in that day, bird horns. And uh, they go, how do you like it? I go, wow. It's really pretty. So, wow. I never did say what I really thought of it. And so, I, I went along. And so I endured for some years that hideous paint color. Never said a word. Never said a word. Until this morning, never said a word. Because, you know, because what people did, they did it because they loved me. You know, it's the color they liked. But they thought, well, if I like it, surely the bachelor will like it. I never said a word about it. I endured for years. And then I went away on vacation again, sometime later. And when I come back, it was this beautiful light yellow or blue or whatever. What else? <sighs> so lovely. So nice. So he took it off. Well, why didn't you say something? Well, you know, I, you know, I could have. I could have said something and, and, and I could have, you know. Heard a lot of feelings because, but they did. They did it in love. They just because they, they loved me, and, and I loved them too. And I realized that you know what they did. They did it in love. Okay. I realized that people baked me a lot of sweets, a lot of sweets, a tremendous amount of sweets. And I know that they they do this because they love me. I I, I can't eat all the sweets. I mean, I would, I would be like 500 pounds if I ate all the Christmas sweets. I, I cannot do that. I know you do it because you love me and you know that I like sweets, but uh, I, I can't eat all those. So what do you, what, Pastor, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? Because they're gonna, I know they're going to ask me, how would you like it? How would you like it? How would you like it? And I'll take, a, I'll take a bite, I'll take a taste, and I'll say, mm, you know what, that really was good. I really liked it. I did. I had, I really liked it. Mm -hmm. Say, what do you do with it then? I find somebody else to give it away to. I'm going to give you broccoli. Here, do that. <laughs> now, I do eat broccoli if it's got to be out of gravy. Okay? It's asparagus that's disgusting. Okay. Anyway, why don't you tell that story? I don't know if the Holy Ghost will cut up. Maybe it'll help somebody today. You know? Things happen that you know is not always your your cup of tea. Somebody was trying to get me a drink a, a tea with them the other day. And I was thinking, my dad always said, sick folks drink tea, regular folks drink coffee. And they said, well, have a cup of tea. And I'm thinking, I don't like tea. I don't, you know, but just to be nice, you know, because they, they were being very nice to me, very sweet. So I said, all right, I, yes, I'd love to have a tea. You want milk in it? I said, no, I'll take it straight up. You know, it wasn't that bad. I was like, you give it a chance. It wasn't that bad at all. Anyway, verse 2, please. And if I have all prophetic powers, you know, we're talking about the, 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 the deeper gifts of the Spirit. Of the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose. And I understand all the secret truths. You operate in the gift of the word of knowledge and the gift of the word of wisdom. And possess all knowledge. And if I have sufficient faith so I can remove mountains. No, 
Yeah. We're, we're faith people, aren't we? We're faith. See, chapter, this is chapter 13. We need to understand something. Chapter 12 is about the gifts of the Spirit. It names the gifts of the Spirit. It tells, them, tells us that, we, that, 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 that there's gifts that, that have been given to the church. And then you jump over one, another chapter, chapter 14. It gives you a little bit of operation how, how the, the gifts of utterance gifts operate to some degree. Some of the prophetic is how they operate to some degree. And so you've got in chapter 12, you got the gifts. In chapter 14, you got the gifts. And right in the middle, God sticks to the love chapter. He sticks to the love chapter. It's kind of like a, I, I, I don't know about you, but I like Oreo cookies. Not just the regular Oreo cookies, the double stuffed Oreo cookies. Because if you give the regular Oreo cookies, you've got to scrape the first cup, you've got to scrape that one off, the, all the, the, the white cream, and then you have to put it on the second one so you get a double. So that's too much work. You can just go get them with the... Now, I haven't had an Oreo cookie in probably two years. But, and don't go out and buy me, please. <laughs> I can go buy my own. If they sold like one, I would probably go with them. I need to get off of this. And if I have sufficient faith so I can move mountains, but if I, do not, if I do not have God's love, love in me, I am nothing. I'm a useless nobody. So it's people that can move, you know, they, they move in the gifts. You know, I, I've been around a lot of faith people, a lot of faith ministers, and to be honest with you, some faith ministers I'd rather hang around with a heathen. And some faith ministers are not very nice. They're not very much fun to be around. Okay, they're, they're very difficult. Uh, um, just, they're just not nice people. I, mean, I don't know how else to put it. It's just uh, they're, they're not pleasant. Be around with it. Well, they're faith. Well, we're faith people too. But uh, as as if you want to walk in faith and you want to walk in the gifts, and we need you to. I need you to. I need you to walk in these things. Our church needs you. To, all of us to all walk in these things. But again, to walk in these things, we've got to. We've got to have our love walk uh, working really good. Okay. It, it's always there's always going to be places for us to tune up. You know, my car needs to tune up once in a while. We can tune some things up. We can do the more we learn, the, the, the more we can begin to operate in. And so uh, we love the gifts. We we are a Holy Ghost church. We have lots of gifts in the Spirit and operation. A great flow of them. Verse three. <clears throat> Even if I dole out all that I have to the poor, providing food, and if I surrender my body to be burned in order that I might glory. But have not love, God's love in me, I gain nothing. You know, it, it, when I, I would think, I would oftentimes think of like uh, Mother Teresa, who just gave her life for the for the people in India, the the slum people and the, the sick. And it, and it says that if, but if, if she did all that, and didn't have God's love, it was wasted for her. I mean, it helped the other people, but it, it's not going to help her in the long run. See, we want to benefit from, from what God's got. God wants to benefit us. Yeah. Okay, God wants to benefit you. He wants to benefit me. And this is how he does it. Okay? But if I do not have love, God's love in me, that's seeing other people as valuable and precious, I gain nothing. Let's go to verse 4. Wow. All right, now, now it begins to, to tell us what, how this love operates. And we have to look at it you can look at it and, and you can look at somebody else and say, well, I wish they were doing that. They need to be doing that. Why aren't you, you know, don't nudge somebody and say, pay attention. Uh, all of us, this is, this is a, a, a mirror, you know. Uh, we have a mirror and it gives a reflection of, of, our, of our face. But when we look into the Word of God, it's a reflection of what God wants us. This is how God can see us. He's telling us things. You know, have you ever gone to, you know, look in the mirror and you forgot to, to you know, you didn't know it. I remember one time, got time for another story. I was, uh, uh, in the wintertime, I like to have a hot chocolate once in a while, but it's got to have marshmallows. Uh, that's the only way you can really get a real good hot chocolate. And so I, I had uh, made it here in my office, and uh, I, I had, I think I had Three or four, maybe five nice marshmallows, and you gotta, you gotta do it right. If you're gonna do it, you might as well do it right. And so you, the, the marshmallows kind of melt and get all kind of chocolatey covered. And, and so I'm, I'm drinking them in, in my cup, 
and I didn't know that my nose was hitting the brown marshmallows. And so I finished the whole cup, and then he comes in, so Scott has a nice conversation with me, and talks to me, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes, and whatever, and then I walk into the bathroom, and, then, and I walk in, and here's this big old young Scott. <laughs> he never said a word. <laughs> <coughs> but the, the mirror revealed it. But the, the, the mirror, listen, the, the mirror revealed there were some flaws in there. This, this is the mirror of God's word for you and me. It reveals. You feel that you, you, when you look into this, you look and see, is, are there some things I need to correct? Because if you don't, you're fine. But if you're not fine, then you have to say, well, I, I see, yes, Lord, I see that. I, I'll do something about that. Love endures long. Love endures long. The God kind of love that is in the inside of our hearts, your heart, my heart, endures. Everybody say endures. Long. Okay, long. Our love is, is not short, but it's long. Okay? It endures long and is patient and kind. I'm working on patience. I'm definitely working on patience. I find my patients tested the most at Sobeys, in line, in the grocery line. As a, you know, you got to be social distancing there, and, 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 and I normally just have five or six or eight things in my car, and they, somebody else, they got like 68, 90 in their car, and we're like, we're jockeying for which, which one's going to open up, and, and I'm in this line, and, and, and I'm looking over at this other line, and I'm thinking, well, I don't know which, which one's going first. Which one is going to be quick? I want to, I want to get in. I want to get out. I don't want to spend a lot of time waiting in line. I, I just, I just, I just want to go. And so I'm there. And I'm, I'm watching, you know. And, and I, I see that there's lines of people everywhere, and it kind of just thins out on the one next to me. And, and I keep looking. And the, the, the lady ahead of me, all she has is a thing of ice cream. But it's the one that's in front of her. The, that the, that the, the, the uh, what is the lady called? That does the cashier. She decided to have this conversation because she knows this lady. They're talking about kids, grandkids, and everything like that. Come on, people. Come, I, I, you know, I want to get going. And so uh, I, I see this other lady. She's looking at this one. that's it's now just about empty. She's looking at me. I go, I get in there and beat her to it. I say, weren't you convicted? No. Like, so good. <laughs> I don't know how she felt about it. But see, I, when I see patients, I, I see, I realize, listen, I, 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 have a, I have some issues I have to work on. There, there's issues that I, I have to work on. Why? Because I can see that I'm not always patient. I can be patient with a lot of people. But, but uh, myself, I, I, there's some issues I have. I know there's nobody else in here like that, but I am. Okay? And kind, be kind. Kind, are you kind? Are you always kind? 100% always, always, yes, always kind. That's what Jan says about Moe, he's so kind. He's so kind. I said, you never get upset with him. No, he's always so kind. People say, my pastor, you're so kind. I work at it, to be kind. Well, oh, don't you want to tell people what you really think? I think I'm kind. That's what I think. I got kindness flowing out of me. See, I, when, when you start walking in love, your thinking will eventually begin to change. Okay? And, and love is never envious or boils over with jealousy. Now, it, one of the things about pastors is often, and listen to me, oftentimes pastors are very insecure. Very insecure. Because somebody could be a better speaker than they, they could be a better teacher than they, they could wow the crowd better. I've been in this for, for 40 some years, I don't care. I, I, I love having when, when Ian comes up and teaches. I mean, he teaches circles around me. I, I just, he does. I mean, he takes you into depths and places like that and say, oh, you shouldn't have him up there. We had Mark and Alice with us over, over uh, uh, on Regent Street. And somebody came up to me one day after they spoke and they said, you better be careful of them. You better be careful of Mark and Alice. One, I discern they're very lazy. 
And two, and two, they're trying to get your church. Well, that's the truth. But they said they're lazy and they're out to get the church. If I take it from you, well, I'm, I'm glad I didn't listen to them. I, I was never, I'm never afraid. Now I don't particularly enjoy going up after Pastor Hooper speaks or, or Brian Moore. I don't even enjoy going up after Eden speaks. Why? Because I'm, I'm not in that. You know, I'm just different. Okay. Maybe they don't like coming after up after I speak. I don't know. But it's, it's everybody's style is different, and I am not intimidated. I am not jealous. I love it. I love the diversity that other people have. I I want it to to, to it enriches me. It enriches all of us. But I was I was asking the Lord one time. I said, "There's a large church that was next to our church in Oklahoma," and I said, "Lord, I, I never see them." ever bring in guest speakers. I said, all they do is they just bring in music groups. I said, I don't understand. And the Lord explained to me why they brought in music groups. Because the music group isn't a threat to the pastor. Because if, the, if somebody came in that was, was a fiery evangelist or a prophet and everything else, and that pastor is just kind of, you know, like, you know, spaghetti, wet spaghetti noodles or something like that, you know? Uh, and so they, 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 they're, they're, they're jealous, they're envious. And they're not going to let the people hear somebody else because they, they, they can't stand the thought of being compared compared to somebody. Okay? Well, you can't. I, I can't compare myself to Ian because he's one of a kind. I can't compare myself to Pastor Nell because she's one of a kind. I'm one of a kind. I'm not, I'm not in competition with me. I'm not in competition with them. In fact, Ian was going to speak Friday night, but now we had to reschedule it to next Friday night because of the, of the storm. You know, there, there's, there's, there's just, in, in my heart, there's no competition. Oh. I bring Brother Bailey in here, okay? I mean, he's wild and crazy. Just the opposite of me. All right, okay. Love never is, is never envious or boils over with jealousy. Aren't you glad that love never boils over? The flesh can boil over. Pastor Zenny would say, uh, are you about ready to lose it, Pastor Gary? <laughs> Am I pushing the envelope too far? <laughs> and she, she would deliberately do the same thing. Just to see if she could. Yeah, I, said, I, 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 said, You'll, I said, you will never, ever see me lose my temper. Ever. You'll never see it. Never, never will happen. This. Never. 18 years, she never saw me lose my temper. Never. Why? Because I got the love of God on the inside. The love of God prefers other people. It honors other people. It honors them. It said, it never boils over with jealousy. It's not boastful or vain. The Lord does not display itself haughtily. Verse 5, please. I think this is good stuff. Yes. Say, I love, I love. Pastor Bible. It is not conceited. Conceited. Yeah, there, there are lots of lots of people can be conceited, but they can they can be you know. Well, the vibe is up there. This is up. I had one guy. He said uh, he said to me he was uh, an old board member. It was kind of like a thorn in the flesh. This was in Oklahoma, and uh, he said to me he said well if I ever he said, if I ever get the chance, I'll, sh I'll show people how you run a church. Because he didn't like how I ran the church. He just said, well, you know, he said, if I ever get the chance. And years later, he got into another church, and there was some, something happened. He ended up taking over the church. Lasted about six months before it just totally disintegrated. Well, see, he, would, he was conceited. He just thought he could do it. Someone asked me one time, how do you start a church? I said, I don't know. I can't, can't really tell you. I just do it. Hey, but don't you have a blueprint? No. I tell people, I said, starting your church is the easiest thing in the world. Keeping it open is another story. Hallelujah. It's not conceited, it's not arrogant, it's not inflated, inflated with pride, it's not rude, it's not unmannerly, and does not act unbecoming. You got time for another story? Amen. I was teaching some years ago here about the force of joy. 
that joy, there is a force, and there is a, a good force, a positive force. And I was teaching along those lines on Sunday morning. Monday morning in the office, I get a phone call from somebody who was in the church on Sunday morning. And they had a complaint about something, and uh, they, they, they filleted me alive. I mean, they, they just chewed on me and chewed on me and chewed on me. And I'm sitting there saying, under my breath, I'm not going to lose my joy. 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 I didn't lose my joy. Now, that person today loves me like you wouldn't believe. They wouldn't even remember what they did. But see, if I would have responded the way they were responding to me, that'd be a totally different story. And they probably wouldn't even be in the church. But see, I recognize there's, there's a joy. I have the joy of the Lord with me. Okay? And maybe not everybody else does, but I'm not going to lose my joy over somebody else. Hallelujah. That's good stuff. <clears throat> it's not rude or unmannerly. It does not act on Coming. See, I always have to check myself. Do I, am I any of these things? Am I rude? I had a woman say to me one time, bless her darling heart, and stupid head. She said to me, she said to me in my office, you're the most arrogant minister I've ever met. And you're arrogant. And I'm thinking, what? Me? I'm arrogant? But she doesn't understand. What people don't understand is that the righteous are as bold as life. There's a difference between being arrogant and being bold in your righteousness. There's a big difference. And when the anointing of God is on you, you, you we're not arrogant. We're, we're, we're just, we're like a lion. And we can speak the truth. Okay? Hallelujah. Aren't you glad the Lord told me to do this Wednesday? Yeah. Because if he had told me to do it today, we might have had a trouble. But once, once the Lord tells me something, I'm not going to change. I don't care. But hair looks the king. I'm gonna I'm still gonna do it because he told me to do it. Amen. Amen. Love, God's love in us, seeing other people as valuable and precious, because God sees us as, as me as valuable and, and precious, does not insist on its own rights or its own ways. Yeah. Does not insist on its own rights or its own ways. I, I like the, the translation that Maria read it out of it. Very powerful. For love is not self-seeking, it's not touchy, it's not touchy, or fretful, or resentful. Now here, here's a good one. It takes no account of evil done to it. So can, can things not, not nice things happen to you? Yes, oh absolutely, it happens to all of us. But I, I have found that people like to keep score. They keep score. Because they, they will tell me, well, yeah, I'm often in love, but then they'll, they'll go back to an incident about 14 years ago. Well, I remember when so-and-so did this. And they said, they, well, they're keeping score. I don't get There's no sense keeping score. It's not bowling. You don't keep score. Bowling, you can keep score. You know, but, but, takes no account of, of the evil done to a wrong, okay? Takes no account. I, I, have, I have had people, I have had ministers try to steal my church. I have had them stab me in the back. And I still, I could forgive them and I could walk in love. I could do it. I did it, okay? Hallelujah. Why? Well, it, it, pays, off, it, it pays off handsomely for me. I'm still handsome and keep up. Yeah. <laughs> Strong with your eyes. <laughs> it takes no account of the evil done to it. it pays no attention to a suffered wrong. I mean, these, these, these are things. See, we're looking into the mirror of God's word, and God is saying, "This is, this is what I've called you to be. This is what I want." You. This is, you can do this. I, you, how, can, how can I do this? Or, it's almost impossible. How can I do it? Because I've got God's love on the inside of me. That's how I can do it. I choose. I choose. I make the choice. I am going to walk in love. I don't care what it takes. Because it costs me when I get out of the love walk. It costs me dearly. 
for this cause, many of you are weak. He's talking about a church. The Holy Ghost Church. Many of you are weak and sick, sickly, and some have died prematurely. Well, I don't want that to happen to me. I want to live long. Finish my course and do it with joy. Pay no attention. Well, aren't you glad that, that this is somebody else? It's not you today. Verse 6, please. <laughs> it does not rejoice in injustice or unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevails. Why? Because God is, is righteous. God is righteous, you know. Uh, I think it's uh, Joyce Myers. She has a, 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 a teaching out there about God is her vindicator. God is the vindicator. You know, sometimes we just need to let God fight our battle. It's like, no, God, I let God handle that. Hallelujah. Oh, that one was great. Okay, let's go. Let's go to verse 7. Okay. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes. Anything and everything that can come against you is going to come against you. You have to understand that. You're, you're not, you're not, you know, it's happened to all of us. It happens to all of us. Everything and anything is going to come against us. So what do I do? Yeah? I'm going to walk in love. Okay? Just because things come against us, doesn't mean God's changed. But it's an opportunity for me to walk in his love. Okay? Okay? Love bears up under anything and everything that comes. So love, it, love will sustain you. The God kind of will sustain you. Keep you above. It'll keep you up, up out of the muck. You don't have to get down into the mud with other people. You stay, stay up in the love walk. Hallelujah. I think it was Mark Twain says, never argue with a fool. Because he'll drag you down to his level and defeat you with experience. Yeah. Just, you never, you never want to just stay up and stay up higher. There's a better place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes. It's ever ready. Wow, this is a big. It's ever ready to be the best. Ever ready, ever ready to believe the best. I want to believe the best of everybody. I mean, there's times people will disappoint you, but I'm gonna, I, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt for a while. Believes the best. Why, why, why would God say that? Because God believes the best of you when, when we're not our best yet. You see how God sees you? We see ourselves, this is where I'm at today. This is my life, this is the stuff I'm in, this is the yuck I'm in. And God sees you way down there. And he says, you're, you're, gonna, you're, gonna, you're gonna grow up, you're gonna mature, you're gonna learn this thing, you're gonna grow up, and I see you way down there. So where we're at today is not necessarily how God sees us. God sees us with the eye of faith. So we might be miserable and, and you know cranky and everything else, but God God sees down the road. You don't you don't make it. You're gonna learn this stuff, and that's where He sees us. You see, when the Bible says that when you when you go into the ministry, you have to have your children uh, not accused of riot. My son Steve was the riot, and when I saw that verse, I felt like I was disqualified from the calling that God had been dealing with me from the time I was fourteen. I felt because of that scripture I was disqualified and technically I was but see God sees things differently remember we talk about walking in the light as he is in the light and so I said but God I'm, I'm, that, that scripture disqualifies me because my son is a terror he's, I, I, he's not in control I, I, I can never pastor but, he, but God wouldn't leave me alone about it he just wouldn't leave me alone and so finally one day I said, all right, Lord, I'll, I'll follow you. I don't understand about this part, about my son Steve. I know even though I'm not qualified, 
I still feel you calling and telling me to do these things. And so I went ahead and, and I went into the ministry and my sons arrived. I go to Bible school, my sons arrived. I'm pastoring my sons arrived. My sons arrived. He's, he's, I mean, we didn't get to lock the doors for fear he'd kill you in the middle of the night. He was, he was really bad. He was really bad. And one night on a Sunday night, he went to another church. They prayed for him, just, just regular prayer. He fell out in the spirit. He was out for 24 hours. And when he got up, he was he was delivered and cured 24 hours later. But what if I would have said, well, I'm not going to do anything until I get to, to, to my son gets better. I, I would have missed many years of, of ministry. I've, 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 I've touched hundreds, by now I've touched hundreds of lives. Hundreds of lives that I never would have touched. Because God does not see us exactly where we are today. You say, well, I, I don't measure up to all those things. So what? One day you will. That's the good news. Yeah. You will. So don't feel bad that you don't today. Because God sees you're going to be there because you're here today. And you're hearing this. You're hearing it. You're receiving it. Because, like Brother Baker said, God loves us too much to leave us the way that we are. He, he loves us too much to leave us the way that we are. Hallelujah. Love is ever ready to believe the best of every person. His hopes are fadeless under all circumstances and it endures everything without weakening. There's going to be some enduring. There's going to be lots of testing. Everything that, that can be thrown at you is going to be thrown at you. You might as well figure this out. You're going to, but you're going to make it. Say, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it big time. I will master the love walk. I'm starting today. My flesh is not in control. My mind is not in control. But the love of God in my heart is in control. Of my actions and of my words. Let's please go to verse 8. I like that love. Two words, love never fails. Love never fails. If you read on, it'll say prophecies will fail one day. But love will never fail. Why? Because that's the foundation of heaven. It's love. So the, the love that, that God has is a part of heaven in your heart. Can't wait till I get to heaven. you got heaven already on the inside of us. But we have to learn how to walk in it. We can't learn how to walk in it. We're not going to enjoy the benefits of it. Oh, you'll get to heaven. But you might as well, you might as well go in style. Amen? Say love never fails. Love never fails. You say, why do you talk so much about love? Because I don't want you to fail. I want you to succeed. I want to succeed. So I've, I've made the choice. I'm walking in love. He said, we've heard this before, time and time again. Oh, we're hearing it again. Because the Holy Ghost said, said to me Wednesday, this is, I want you to teach this lesson. I said, oh, all right, I'll, I'll do it. But unless, unless you want to do something else, we'll do something else. Because we've covered this so many times. He said, no, I want you to do it. I'm just, I'm just obeying the Holy Spirit. So if you don't like my message, don't get upset with me, please. Get upset with the Holy Ghost. Get angry with God. Say, I don't like that. Well, it's, it's his message. It's not my message. It's his message. It's not my message. I'm just a messenger. Okay? Love never fades out or becomes obsolete or comes to an end. As for prophecy, the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose, it will be fulfilled and pass away. As for tongues, we love tongues, they will be destroyed. She says, for knowledge, it shall pass away, it will lose its value and be superseded by truth. But love, that love that's in our hearts, will carry us all the way into heaven. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Something Pastor Denny used to say that was so simple but so profound. 
you don't know what's in a person. They're like toothpaste. You don't know what's in a belly that squeeze. You don't know what's in the, the, the tube looks really good. But it's, it, but when you get squeezed, you know, we all get squeezed. The devil loves to squeeze people. He loves to squeeze me. When he squeezes, squeezes me, love comes out. Well, that would be big. Well, I did what you told me to, Lord. You did, I did. Hallelujah. We want to pray for uh, Brother Albert this morning and uh, uh, Sister Flavia. She has uh, some uh, surgery tomorrow and uh, Albert has some, some uh, surgery scheduled for Tuesday. Is that right? So uh, we're going to just stand up. We're, just, we're going to lift them up and we're going to believe God that uh, they're going to uh, they're going to just sail through these things and that uh, um, they're not going to be finding anything, you know, there's going to be problems that, that they'll find that the Lord's already been in there and has done taking care of so much. So Father, we come right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we lift up Mom, we lift up Flavia to you, Father God. She is so precious to us, Father God. Lord, she's always calling, always checking up on us, always checking on me, Father God. But uh, she's so special, Father God. We pray. We thank you, Father God, that your hand is there. You're going to, uh, in, the, in the surgical procedure, Father God, they're not going to find anything of any real significance, Father God. That's where we're believing it. That uh, they're going to go in and, and do a fix and patch her back together, and her recovery will be supernatural, Father God. She won't have any issues. She won't have any problems. And Father, it'll be it'll be miraculous. It'll be a notable miracle. And Father, for Brother Albert too, Lord God, Lord, that that uh, uh, the the skin cancer that I think is cursed in Jesus' name. Uh, they're going to get every little speck of it, every little rib of it out. There's not going to be a problem anymore. In Jesus' name, we thank you for the angels that are there in the operating room with them. We're keeping them safe, sound, and secure. Father, they by His stripes, Lord, we are healed. We're so grateful and so thankful. Lord, in Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. 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 So, Miss Kathy, before you, O'Hara, before you leave, I have to, something to give to Rob, if you remember that. But, Tony, would you mind coming and doing the offering this morning? Uh, I see you already put your offering up here on the altar. Some other people have followed you, too. Church. How y'all doing? How y'all fired out? Amen. I'm excited. I'm excited. Um, for some of you probably noticed again this morning that I kind of had to worship, uh, brought my worship to my, my tithe up front. And that being said, I, I really feel there's something that the Lord wanted me to do. I, while I was back sitting in my chair, I was saying, Lord, I said, do I do it? Do I do it during worship? Do I do it? You know, while the pastor's preaching, whatever have you. I felt the Lord said, we're worshiping God. Our tithes is worship unto God. Amen? Amen? It's a sweet incense in, into the Bible says, into the nostrils of God. The reason I bring it up front, I think I did mention before, maybe some of you weren't here. It's a, the Bible said in 2 Corinthians, the church of Macedonia, they did, they did not have to be persuaded. They did not have to be coaxed. They did not have to hear five, ten different sermons, whatever have you. And the Bible said even though they were, you know, having rough time financially themselves, the Bible said they gave out of their lack. They just gave. They just wanted to give to God. Amen? Right? This morning as I was thinking about all this too, I was thinking about the woman that had just one pence. And the Bible says she gave the last bit of what she gave or what she had. You see, there was, there was many, Jesus said there was many others in, 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 the, in, in this temple at the time that had given out of their excess. But this one woman that had that one pence, she gave everything she had. It was more than everything else that everybody else had given. Amen? That's God. You can give up God. You can give. You know, I've often heard people say, I don't give to get. I'm sorry, but I do. I give to get. And the reason I say that I give to get, I give it with a heart of love for God. 
of appreciation of what he's done. But I give so I have more to give again. So I can help the, you know, the church, or I can help others when they have needs. And as I feel the Lord lead me and guide me, whatever I have you. I looked at the, the, the bulletin this morning. I see there was almost $10,000 given last, last week. I mean, my God, that's unbelievable for a small church. I've never met a senior church as given as I've seen in this church. Simple that. But you know, you can't out give God. I, I've proved in my life. God says he's a proving here with him, right? You cannot give up God. If you have if you have a need, that's what you want to get. And then God says he'll make people give on to you. I've seen God do that to me so often, so many times. I've seen him do it to others. God is not a respected person. He doesn't just do it for me. He doesn't just do it for the pastor. He'll do it for you. The word of God says he's I'll supply your every need. He's I'll supply exceedingly, abundantly, beyond what you can even think or ask. Someday I want you to let me preach here a full sermon on tithes and offers, your pastor. I would just love to do that. And the reason that's in my heart is because I want to see you, the church, blessed. I want to see you blessed so exceedingly abundantly. God is not a liar. He, 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 he doesn't say something not do it. His word will never return on void. And you've got to walk by faith. I beg pardon? Amen, amen. I was in. Hallelujah. So I'm going to preach that on Sunday. Bring people. I'm going to tell you, bring people. Because I'm going to tell you, they're going to be blessed. They'll be blessed with what God has put in my heart. Amen? I'm going to tell you, God loves you. I got four kids. You know, I'm going to tell you, if somebody came to me today and said, you know, which one of those four kids did you, you know, would, uh, you know, would be broke while all the other three would be, you know, would be, be wealthy, whatever have you. I said, I couldn't choose. Which one of those four kids would be sick if you had to choose one? Which one would you choose? I couldn't choose it because I love them unconditionally, each and every one of them. Amen? And as a parent, I want to see each one of my children. But God says he loves you, and he loves you. I want to see y'all blessed. If you haven't got the gift, give it anyways. Give it anyways. Say, God, here, you know, I don't, I don't have nothing about the gift. God, I'm, I'm going to give this to you. Amen? And then watch what God will do. And I just tell you, I've seen it over and over and over and over again. You know, I don't think I have to really tell you all that. If I look at, and it wasn't just last Sunday. There was the ten thousand dollars given, almost ten thousand given. Week after week after week, I get blown away. How such a congregation like this, how much you have given into the body of Christ. God sees. He sees, he sees. Amen? Just like I want to see my children blessed. I'm gonna tell you the law of gravity, whether you believe it or not, if I drop this to the ground, guess what? It's gonna drop because that's the law of gravity. But so is with the blessing, with the tithe and the offering. Wasn't it? Just throw your papers on the floor like that. Amen. So amen. Again, the church talks in the Bible. The Bible talks in Second Corinthians about the church Macedonia. They did not have to be persuaded. They need, didn't need to have ten sermons or or to, you know ten ten different verses of scriptures. Or they didn't have to be coaxed. They readily of themselves, without even having that sermon, came and gave of themselves unto the Lord. Amen. Oh, God is so good. God is so good. But I'm going to ask you tonight. It's a test. You know, anybody here need an envelope? Anybody need an envelope? Okay. Anyway, we're going to give here to him to the Lord tonight. Guys, you know, that's it. We're giving out to God. God don't need our money. He don't need our money. No. Amen. He wants to give you an opportunity to bless him. Let's all pray over the tithing. Because I really believe that we're going to come in agreement with what the Word of God says. Father, we just thank you, Lord God. You are our only source, Lord God. You are our resource, Lord God. And today as we give into the kingdom, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, I set myself in agreement with the people here today, Lord. And all that they give, Lord God, we, we decree in Jesus' name, will be multiplied back. Blessed of you, pressed down, runs over, shaped together, overflow, more than, more than enough. God, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We thank you, God, that you made us to be a blessing in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody says, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I guess I'm going to wrap it up now. That being said, I think.
tonight, six o'clock. We have the service. Hi, Rana. I beg your pardon. Oh yeah, your brother, your son, brother, your son, your son Greg is speaking tonight. I'm really looking forward to hearing it. I mean, the first time I ever heard him, so I look forward to that. So again, great friend. As uh, uh, let's say Tuesday, right? It's Tuesday there is prayer, and Wednesday is a midweek service. Friday morning is war room. <laughs> Friday morning what? The war room. In the war room, amen. Friday night is the blessing service. And Friday night is the blessing service. I, I'm so glad I got that right down in the pad. Amen. Amen. Uh, God bless you all. You guys all have a wonderful, wonderful day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.